Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Ubiquity call on the three essential keys to becoming a high impact social entrepreneur. My name is Peter Merry, and I'm Ubiquity's Chief Innovation Officer. This is an encore to the call that we did on Wednesday. And uh, the advantage that you get being on the encore is that we've been able to pull out the juiciest pieces from the Wednesday call and weave them together so that we really get to the essential nuggets of this core question that we're facing. The way it'll work is I'm going to speak to what we're going to do for a little bit and one of our colleagues will come in and uh, talk about the community aspect and then our president Jim Garrison will spend some time um, talking about ubiquity and uh, introducing Ken Wilber who is our inaugural chancellor and Stephanie Pace Marshall and then we'll wrap it up at the end of the hour. So I guess it's a good afternoon to you from a rather rainy and grey Netherlands here to those in Europe. Probably good morning to anyone who's joining us from the East Coast and good evening if you're in Asia. It's great to have you all with us. This question that we've got before us at the moment is one that is certainly very dear to me and it's really at the core of what ubiquity has been set up for. What does it really take to be able to make a living, making a positive difference in the world today? Given the life conditions that we're in, given what's going on in the world, how can we best make our contribution? How can we bring our passion into the world in such a way that we create the impact we need? And I just wanted to share with you a couple of images um, to give you a sense of the context within which we have set up ubiquity. The first is this one. And I don't know if, how many of you read uh, you know, Dan Brown's bestseller, but this was the only image in that book. And it came out of The New Scientist. And what it's basically saying is the world that we're living in today is radically different to the world in which our education systems uh, were set up. All of these issues that we're facing, whether they're to do with CO2, species, population, temperature, etc., etc., are all converging at a level of complexity and at a, a, a speed that we've never had to face before. So an educational institution that's been set up in the time of the Industrial Revolution is basically not able to equip us with the skills that we need for today's conditions. How do we deal with a situation like this, where we have an old system that has been in place for a while starting to collapse around our ears and the new one not in place yet to be able to guide us into the future? We are literally in what one of our faculty members, Irvin Laszlo, would call the chaos point, the point where it's falling apart the new is emerging under the radar screen, and yet it's not yet mature enough to take over the helm. So this is what Ubiquity was set up for. Ubiquity has been set up to give us the mindset, the skill set, and the tool set to be able to navigate ourselves and humanity through this particular transition period. One of the key elements about the power of what we're doing at Ubiquity is how we're connecting up the people like yourselves out there in the world who really care about this and really want to make a difference. I was talking to a guy from Denmark the other day who said to me, you know what's so exciting about ubiquity? At last I can show up somewhere and be myself. I can be who I know I really want to be with people who are thinking in the same way about the world, who carry the same values, People who, who know there are challenges in the world, but are not into gloom and doom. People who really know we can make a difference together. People who understand you've got to do your own inner work, but who aren't interested in new age fluffiness, but really know there's a discipline to being able to show up as a high impact change maker in the world. This is my community and this is my tribe, is what he said to me. And that was one of the most powerful things uh, that I've heard in recent days. Now, to, to connect up to that, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Constantina Clark, who is our Director of International Student Services and Admissions 
and who's just got a beautiful knack for being able to make people feel welcome and really understands the quality and potential of the community aspect. So, Constantina, welcome to the call. Would you like to just say a few words? Yes, Peter, thank you so much for what you just shared. I know that that really, really rang true for me. And what I want to share with all of you today is we are offering you an incredible educational opportunity, but we are also offering you something that is so simple and elemental but so crucial. We are offering ourselves in relationship with each of you. And here at Ubiquity, I think a really key factor for all of us is that we want you to experience a very warm and authentic sense of belonging within our community. I know when I make big decisions about where I want to place my educational home and where I want to feel welcome, there is something inside me, a very deep place where I want to be able to say, I belong here. This is where I want to be. This is where my tribe gathers. And this is a community that I belong to and is a, a really important part of my essential energies. And I'd like you all to consider that this is what we have here at Ubiquity waiting for you. We want to come up alongside you and help you truly experience that deep sense of belonging. You know, I've thought about this a lot, and I think instinctively we all tend to gravitate to the tribe that can hold us in what we believe to be our most authentic embrace of belonging. And there's something that's just incredibly fulfilling about being in the midst of these energies as a tribe and as a community that has a collective presence in the world together. So as you listen today, keep that in mind. This, this is what we have for you. And we really do invite you and welcome you to be a part of our tribe here at Ubiquity. If there's anything I can do to help you or answer any questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, we are here for you, and you are a part of our tribe. So Peter, I'll, I'll hand it back to you now. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you, Constantina. And great to have you on the team. Um, you know, it's so true what you say around, around the importance of community, particularly for people who are committed to make a change in the world. Because one, it's not always easy to live up to the standards that we know are needed to make a, a high impact. And so being, having a group to hold each other to account, as well as to share our challenges with, is, is so powerful and so critical for us to be able to really live up to our highest potential in making a positive impact in the world. So thanks for that. Um, I'd like now to introduce you to uh, Dr. Jim Garrison, who is a uh, founding president at Ubiquity University. I've known Jim for a, a number of years when we went back to working on large scale climate change projects together. And we both ended up in this together because I guess we feel that there is a high level of potential to, to leverage the learning and innovation of a global community of people who are really committed to this. And I can't think of anybody better to lead us in that endeavor than Jim. So over to you, Jim. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Constantina, uh, and welcome everyone to this call. I really appreciate this opportunity to join my colleagues in sharing our excitement at what we uh, are seeking to offer to the world through Ubiquity University. As Peter indicated, our central mission is to provide a whole new kind of education for a whole new kind of world. The slide that Peter put up at the beginning from the New Scientist, which shows all the vectors of the environment and human civilization going just about straight up and converging, is really the whole new kind of world in which every single one of us finds ourselves. And so, that's the starting point for ubiquity. And that's what we understand and scientists understand as the new world of hypercomplexity. When small actions and events 
anywhere can ricochet through the global system everywhere and have profound effects. And whether it's the Ebola virus out of West Africa or ISIS militants out of the Middle East or drought in California or flooding in Bangladesh or earthquakes in Nepal, we're all in an increasingly integrated world and we need to take that into account as we prepare our educational institutions for the emerging generation of young people who are coming of age in this kind of hyper complexity. And that leads to the kind of education we're offering and the fact that Ken Wilbur is our chancellor because we take the position that the only way to truly deal with hyper complexity is from an integral framework, an integral approach. Why? It is the integral approach that honors all the different data points and doesn't subordinate any one of the ways that we humans have of understanding and expressing our reality, but honors them all, puts all the truths on the table, categorizes them, and then uses that synthesis to understand and navigate through the world. And that's what integral is, and that's why Ken Wilber, who's the preeminent philosopher of integral theory uh, is our uh, chancellor. And I'll be uh, introducing him uh, in a moment and bringing him in, him, him in online. But I would like to say that as we think about hypercomplexity and we think of an integral approach in an educational system, the reason why this is so important to us and important to you is because when you begin to learn in an integral framework, what happens is that you begin to activate all the different kinds of intelligences that you have naturally. It's not just the scientific, it's not just the analytic, it's not just the mathematical, but it's the social, it's the emotional, it's the artistic, it's the spiritual intelligences, and all these together are what activates your highest potential. And that's why at Ubiquity, we say that if you go through our, our process, you will activate your highest potential, what Ken calls your superhuman potential. So it's this interface between hyper-complexity and integral approach, activating your highest potential that is at the heart of what Ubiquity is bringing into the world in the whole new kind of education that we're seeking to establish in partnership with colleagues literally uh, around uh, this precious planet of ours. So I'd like to uh, welcome Ken and he'll have a, a brief statement on this interface between um, uh, hyper complexity and integral and activating your highest potential. So Ken, we're very honored that you are our uh, Chancellor, and we look forward to uh, hearing your words with us today. Indeed. Um, well, thank you very much, Jim. It's been a delight and a pleasure to work with um, all of the team that we put together. It's an exceptional crew, and this is an exceptional time. I mean, it's really a, a, a first in history, and the number of things that we're facing and both in terms of extraordinary opportunities and absolutely catastrophic um, nightmarish potentials um, are really um, unlike anything that, that we've seen in history. And so we do want to start to look at our own human growth and development. What helps make human beings the best that they can be in terms of, of growing and developing into the very highest, best, brightest possible stance that they can have? And so if we start, we look at Western developmental psychology, all human beings develop. We learned how to make that development better, brighter, bigger, bolder, greater across the board. Developmental psychologists continued to track and map human development into the 1960s. 
And at that time, they started to notice a new stage of development just beginning to emerge. Somehow, this new developmental stage intuited this overall holistic or comprehensive or all-inclusive meaning. It looked at things and saw wholeness everywhere. Developmentalists were unanimous that this stage marked a new and entirely different type of human growth, a stage that powerfully went beyond all previous first-tier stages and blasted into a new level of human possibilities and potentials. Radically new and deeply holistic teaching systems began to show up. New and more unifying scientific theory and research began to appear. Wildly comprehensive and truly inclusive growth and in self-development teachings and practices began to appear, pulling together the best and brightest of virtually all the different growth techniques into truly holistic systems of growth, something that had never been done before. Around the world and in literally every human discipline, New and truly unified and integrated approaches began to appear, approaches that were extraordinarily more effective, more efficient, more successful, more unified, more whole, constructed from this new and higher level. The superhuman potential program, for example, that we're offering at Ubiquity, is an example of a self-improvement or self-development course, and it's truly getting rave reviews. And Ubiquity University itself was built based upon integral principles. Its teaching techniques, its overall educational philosophy, and its courses and practices are all firmly anchored in this radically new and comprehensive stage of human growth. So you're truly getting an integral education at Ubiquity. So using an integral approach allows you to move beyond the typical fragmented, partial, siloed, and ultimately broken approaches taken by almost every other approach available. You'll gain a genuine understanding of this world, this universe, how you fit in it, as well as how the different knowledge systems fit together in a whole, coherent perspective as well. With the Superhuman Potential Program, you'll go through virtually all of the major types of skills and capacities a human being has, including all major multiple intelligences, all levels of development and states of consciousness, major types of development, all approaches based on the good and the true and the beautiful. You'll get a workout in what we could indeed call all of you. Not part of you, not a slice of you, not a piecemeal fragment of you, but all of you, and thus the results of the superhuman potential program, as well as the education you'll get at Ubiquity University itself, could indeed be called superhuman, not in some sort of bragging superhero sense, but in the simple, basic sense of working from the very highest of your potentials. We are tapping into the very leading edge of evolution itself, the very leading edge of the highest stages of human growth and development, a perspective you can get virtually nowhere else in the world except in courses such as these and in educational environments such as Ubiquity University, which are rare indeed. Thank you, Ken. Now, you're probably thinking, Wow, this is extraordinary. If I could get an education that activates my highest potential, that may be easy to say, but uh, I wonder whether it's really possible. And it's within this context that I would like to introduce you to Stephanie Pace Marshall, who's on our founding board, who's been an educator since the 1960s, and has the distinction of applying what Ken has been talking about in terms of an integral transformational education in the real world with astonishing results. 
Stephanie was the founding president of the Illinois Math and Science Academy 30 years ago, which has now been recognized as probably the premier high school in science and technology, not only in the United States, but around the world. And it's based on the application of an integral approach and transformational learning principles to the cutting edge of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Now let's just pause a moment and, and reflect on this. If you remember Peter's chart at the beginning, where all the vectors are going up, that's a result of our science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in a fundamental way. Our world is STEM. And how we understand it, how we redirect it at this crucial moment in history could not be more important. And Stephanie Pace Marshall has demonstrated in Illinois that that's possible. And the extraordinary result of this is that her alumni coming out of IMSA rank as some of the leading entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley and the cutting edge of science and technology in the world today. So when you think of ubiquity and you think of an institution that's really seriously dealing with hypercomplexity, with an integral approach that activates your highest potential, also bear in mind that that highest potential is what unleashes your genius, what unleashes your entrepreneurial spirit. And that's why we brought Stephanie on the call today. She serves on our board. And so, Stephanie, I'd like to welcome you to comment on how IMSA has accomplished these great uh, achievements in unleashing the entrepreneurial spirit through your alumni. Uh, thank you, Jim. Um, as you know, you know we've had, uh, we have over five thousand alum in the last uh, 28 years, and I think um, uh, the, the ones that people would, would know about in, in the larger sphere are, of course, the founders of YouTube, um, the chief technology officer of PayPal, um, Mosaic, Netscape, Yelp, um, OK Cupid, all a variety of of things that have now become sort of uh, on everybody's tongue that they know these organizations. And what's fascinating is that the, the alum that I mentioned are a part of a growing network in Silicon Valley so that we have tentacles in PayPal and in Facebook and all of those organizations because the students, they're not students any longer, uh, know how each one thinks and they're helping one another develop their own businesses and and enterprises that are really world changing. And our students are very focused on what can they do to make the world better to advance the human condition. We know that environments shape minds and we know that minds shape the world. It's also, I think, part of the DNA of Ubiquity University. We recognize the, the amazing potentials that people have when they are allowed to be self-directed, uh, follow what they are both good at and love, when they're encouraged to work with people that share their sense of meaning and purpose and direction, and when they're, when they're allowed to uh, fail in a, in a safe way, um, we, we just have no idea what we are capable of. And so I think we are at, with the, in, in, at this moment in time, um, our cultural paradigm and our cognitive paradigm, I think, is really, really shifting. That there are fault lines that are appearing uh, in, in what once were unprecedented or unquestioned policies and institutions. Uh, and part of it is driven by the ubiquitous nature of technology, the growing sense of interdependence, the recognition that we are inextricably wound together. Um, and so we're at a point where 
where uh, in some ways all bets are off and we are able to invent the kind of dynamic and alive, unengaged learning environment that can really help to unleash the astonishing capacities that we have. Every problem is interdependent. And that's where, as as you have said, uh, as well as Ken and many in the ubiquity community, we are living in the context of hyper-complexity now, not just complexity. And if we are going to develop students who have not only a sense of, of wanting to engage and grapple with issues of social, economic, and environmental justice, wrestle with moral dilemmas, uh, we need to create a STEM environment, but all environments where they can become more agile, where they can become more autonomous, where they can become more improvisational um, and failure resilient, not resistant, which is where most kids are now, uh, but failure resilient. Um, and they understand that they can indeed shape the future. I, I am so excited to be a part of Ubiquity because all bets are off. You know, we're a giant experiment just like IMSA was and is. Uh, IMSA always saw itself as a pioneering community. We still are. Uh, we certainly don't have everything right, but I think as long as an organization continues to ask the right questions relative to designing environments that unleash, ignite, nurture, invite, whatever the the active verb is, people to become all of who they can be, then then we're all on the right track. Thank you, Stephanie. And that leads us really to this question of leadership, because there's a fundamental interrelationship between activating your highest potential in your entrepreneurial spirit and becoming a leader in your community and an active presence and change agent in your world. I've had the real privilege over the last several decades of being in association with various leaders in different sectors around our precious planet. I had the uh, opportunity to work with Mikhail Gorbachev right at the end of his tenure as president of the Soviet Union uh, in the early 1990s uh, and to work with him to assemble through the State of the World Forum uh, a leadership network where we convened conferences literally all over the world. Uh, around the challenge of transforming conversations that matter into actions that make a difference and uh, interacted with some of the great personalities of our time, Jane Goodall and, and uh, Ellie Wiesel and Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela and uh, various uh, others um, uh, for uh, a great many years. And then after 9-11, um, we decided that it was no longer really possible uh, to um, engage in this kind of elegant international politics. Um, so um, I went into academia and developed Wisdom University and again found myself very privileged to be interacting with some of the great teachers and leaders of our time. I mean, Ken and Stephanie uh, all came out of that uh, State of the World Forum period and then were working together with me and others, uh, Gene Houston, Irvin Laszlo, Stan Groff, Rupert Sheldrake, uh, a whole array of individuals. And what I began to really understand and observe, I would say, about leadership is that the people I was watching and interacting with that were demonstrating high octane leadership in their communities in the various sectors were all people who had an instinct for self-mastery. They were people who knew who they were. They knew where they were going. And they had the capacity through their example and through the charism of their purpose to aggregate energy around the mastery of what they were seeking to bring into the world. 
And that was a real inspiration to me uh, in myself leading you, uh, Wisdom University um, for the 10 years uh, after the 10 years with the State of the World Forum. Another thing that I observed was that leaders are really unbundled. That when you're activating your highest potential, when you're unleashing your entrepreneurial spirit in a way that changes lives and changes conditions, you become unbundled. I mean, think about most of the people we know, they live small. They're constrained by convention. They obey all the rules. They're basically afraid to deviate from the norm. And what does a leader do? A leader bursts into the scene. A leader activates change by transforming reality. And so I think that the opportunity at Ubiquity is to live large and become who you most essentially are. And it's within this context, I want to make just one point about the design of Ubiquity that actually came from Peter. Peter uh, is our chief innovation officer, and he's the uh, mind that is really choreographed, I would say, the kind of learning you can expect at Ubiquity, where we take what's 100% at the conventional university around academic study, but at Ubiquity, it's only a one-third. We, we're, we're as rigorous as any Ivy League institution, uh, an elite institution in the world. I was trained at Harvard and Cambridge, and I can tell you as an educator that what we have at Ubiquity University matches that in terms of academic study and academic excellence. The major difference is that all of our faculty understand hyper-complexity, integral, entrepreneurship, and leadership, and they teach their courses in that spirit. And then Peter added two other sections. One is on self-mastery, because we understand from an integral framework that your interior, your moral development, your emotional intelligence, your social, your spiritual intelligence, is as important as anything you're going to do that prepares yourself in the externals in terms of your professional competencies. And then we have collaborative missions because we believe that learning should be in community and that given the hyper complexity of our times, all of us have to be engaging collaboratively on issues directly relevant to our lives. So it's this trilateralization between your academic study, your self-mastery exercises, and your collaborative creativity in the missions that you take up in the various courses um, you undertake that is at the heart of what Ubiquity University uh, education is all about. The bottom line is that at Ubiquity, we're seeking to activate your highest performance by activating your passion about who you want to be in the world. And within the context of a collaboration and a creative interaction with your peers around issues that directly impact your life, but from the perspective of not just understanding the world, but understanding the world so that you can change the world as an active leader and entrepreneur, that is the kind of co-creativity that we're seeking to both embody as a learning community here at Ubiquity, but also to provide you as a framework for how you can be in the world at this extraordinary and critical time in our collective history. As Constantina said, ubiquity is a community, but more deeply put, 
ubiquity is a global tribe. And what a tribe is, it's a group of people who feel a kinship, a basic relatedness in which all of them are nurtured and all of them are supported to be who they most passionately want to be. And that's one reason why we have uh, Peter's course on creative leadership in complex times is one of our core courses and one of the courses with which we're actually uh, establishing ubiquity. So, uh, Peter, I'll turn it back over to you, but I want to really acknowledge your leadership uh, in shaping ubiquity uh, along with Ken and Stephanie and Constantina and our whole team um, around these seminal issues. Um, so important for all of us to understand and orient our lives around. Yes, thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, as we think about this leadership question, because it's it's really key at this time, the, the nature of leadership in these hyper-complex, rapidly changing times. And Jim talked about the power of leadership to break onto the scene and, and shape our reality. And at the same time as that, which is that powerful, potentially masculine energy of really being able to step into it, at the same time, things are changing so quickly around us that we can't afford to get attached to one thing or the other. So we're continually having to navigate our way through a rapidly changing world with a clarity of vision, yet a dexterity that comes with the ability to be sensitive to what's going on around us. So this combination of power and sensitivity, or one could say the masculine and the feminine, and our ability to integrate those is critical to our leadership success at this time. And that's one of the uh, reasons that we developed this course on transformational leadership strategy and governance. It was a number of years ago as I was thinking about what was going on in the world and my experience working in the corporate sector as well as the not-for-profit and trying to work with government ministries to help them become more responsive to what's going on in the world and really thought about what does it take for a leader today to create the conditions for an organization or a community or even a country to be able to engage effectively with the world the way it is because we have a lot of ways of doing things that are essentially rooted in the past and the world has moved on but our organizations our systems our structures our education hasn't so that was the impulse behind the book which has led to this um, course and it was the first course that we tried out on the platform um, and we've got both a foundations version of this and we've got a advanced version of this course and it really integrates that tripartite approach that Jim was talking about. Because if you think about it, your ability to be able to show up in the world effectively as a leader is not something you can learn from a book. It's not just a co your cognitive development. It really is about the development of the whole person. Because the quality of impact that you have in the world is directly related to your inner state of being, directly related to the nature of who you are when you step in to do the things that you do. And from that perspective, we need to look at both ourselves individually as leaders. We need to also try to create the organizational structures and systems and processes that can operate in this rapidly changing world of hyper complexity. Because our old hierarchical systems and structures are simply inadequate to be able to respond quickly enough to that reality because decisions have to go all the way up to the top and then they have to come all the way back down. And by the time the decision has come back down, the world has changed and things have moved on. So how do we create a flexible, dynamic, a living system of an organization that's rapidly learning but doesn't get stuck in its own interior learning process is continuing to move forward to its vision but is taking in information and processing that information and then uh, moving forward one natural step at a time. Now <clears throat> those 
systems and structures for that kind of dynamic steering, as we call it, do exist, and that's part of what we share in the course. But that's only one part of it, because you've got your systems and structures, but you also need to have the kind of culture in your organization that is able to do the same. And in a way, that's a harder nut to crack than the systems and structures, because you can put in place a new governance structure, uh, you can create new laws for your town or new laws for your country. You can you can try to construct a new system. But if the way that people think about things and the way that people generally do things together doesn't change, you'll end up creating an empty shell of an organization because next to it will become the parallel organization, which is the one that's actually alive in the culture of the people. So we also have to learn to engage and transform these collective cultures uh, that we're a part of. And that's very subtle work. It's not work that can just be done through thinking about it and then rolling out a plan. It needs the, to engage people and engage people in such a way that it becomes an invitation to them to want to uh, move into what is um, a more highly potentiated uh, organization that's somewhere in their gut when you talk to people one on one, you know, in organizations and communities, they know it in a one on one conversation. They'll admit it and people are feeling it. And around the coffee machines in the organization, people are having those conversations. But to be able to bring it into the formal culture of the system, that's the challenge. And the trick is to start small with the people who are ready for it. So the people in these small change uh, communities who are ready to be the pioneers and who aren't going to brag to everybody else about what they're doing, but are just going to try to do it and are going to work on it together. are going to support each other in their attempts, in their failures, in their celebrate their successes. And then as they begin to demonstrate that you can actually do it a different way, that starts to attract other people who go, hey, what are you doing? That looks cool. That, that seems to be working. Can I play too? And rather than trying to get on a soapbox and convince the rest of the world and the rest of the organization that this is how it has to be done, you do it by demonstrating that it's possible. And so in the course, we go into ways that you can do that. How do we actually start to engage the culture? How do we start to create these new systems and structures? And what qualities are needed in ourselves as a leader to be able to do that effectively. So that's one of the um, courses that we have available coming up in May. Uh, we have the Advanced Transformational Leadership Strategy and Governance, and we have a Foundations course. And we also have a few other courses that we're starting with. And I just wanna share some of those with you as well. So we have a foundation course in Science and the Mind that is really powerful approach to Often what science has done is taken things down into small pieces. And what Andrew Kornfeld, our faculty member, does here is show how it's all interconnected and connect up the scientific, rational world with the inner world of reality and show how the mind really works and how ultimately with our mind, we have an extreme um, possibility to be able to influence the world around us. That was one of the ones we tried in our, out in our beta test and have a great uh, feedback on the content of that course. Another one we will have is with Dr. David Martin on the fundamentals of trade, finance and the new economy. So when I did a master's degree at Edinburgh University in human ecology, one of the things that stuck with me that our teacher said was, I don't want you to leave this place being rebels without a clue. He said, you need to understand how the world actually works out there. You need to be able to engage the reality, be able to talk the language of the current system, be able to unmask it and show why it works and why it doesn't work, which is why we have a nice little saying at Ubiquity, which is we want you to be able to play the game to be able to change the game. So what David Martin gives us in this course is a, is a very deep insight into the way the trade and finance economic systems work, how you can think about it differently and what alternatives are in that context. And then with Lisa Lee, 
we have a course on critical thinking, complex problem solving, and appreciative inquiry. Of course, for any change agent out there in the world, the ability to be able to see what's going on, bring a critical mind to it, but not just deconstruct it with our critical thinking in a slightly unappreciative way, but also be able to see the value of what is there. Because every solution that we see around us at the moment, every way we're doing things, even though it might be outdated at the moment, it emerged initially as a good solution to an initial problem. So we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So what are the things that are working? How do we appreciate those? And how do we amplify those so that they become the attractors of a new way of doing things? At the same time, being able to see what isn't working and jettison, let go of that. So it's a core course in terms of the way we bring ourselves to um, the issues and the content in the world around us. And then the living universe with Dwayne Elgin, really one of the elders of our time who has um, pioneered language about how we come to describe and understand the world around us as a living system. So not just as dead matter. It's, it's what the new science has been telling us. And from a scientific perspective, in a way, they're just beginning to catch up. And what Duane does is, is, is help us put language and concepts to what it really means to understand the world as being alive, to understand everything as being interconnected. What are the implications for our everyday behavior? What are the implications for how we design our communities, our organizations, our countries, our governance systems, when we assume that the universe is alive and not just a bunch of dead matter? When we take that as the basic assumption, it radically transforms the way that we engage the world. And if we are, if you think about it, if we are to make that assumption and, and attune ourselves to a reality of a living universe and design our systems based on a living universe, then we're far more likely, in my perspective, to survive in the coming period and stay alive because we're in tune with life. We're not aligning ourselves to essentially a perspective on reality that sees everything as dead and dying. So a very powerful uh, course from Dwayne Elgin um, that we'll, we'll be including in the first offerings as well. So there's a number of, you know, important aspects that we've covered. Um, to summarize some of those, obviously, when we engage in learning at Ubiquity, we're developing new competencies, um, inner competencies as well as uh, skill sets and mindsets. Um, we're developing our profile. And this is important because um, when we did research into what the leaders of the world today are actually saying they need, and this came out of IBM's global CEO studies. So this is, they, they interview 1,700 leaders across the world. And they were the ones who initially said, hyper complexity is what we're seeing. You know, we basically don't have a clue how to navigate this rapidly changing extremely complex world. And not only do we not understand it, but we're not getting what we need out of our education systems to be able to have the people who know how to navigate it. And they were saying the kind of things we need are um, uh, effective communication skills, complex problem solving, uh, collaboration, creativity. And if you stop and think about it, those are the kind of qualities that you can't just learn in a cognitive learning environment, that you can't just learn by drilling down into small pieces and learning just to become a, a very good accountant on the side. It requires us to be able to see the interconnections between all these different issues. So the kind of competencies that you will be developing at Ubiquity are completely aligned with the kind of competencies that employers are saying that they need. Obviously, what we've also mentioned is that there's the, a global community on Ubiquity. Being online, we're instantly global. We've had uh, people on the alpha and beta tests from over 30, 40 countries. Um, the possibility to build relationships, find people you could work with on your projects, on your social enterprises from many different contexts. Build the networks there um, and engage with people who are really like you asking these fundamental questions. How do I make a living making a positive difference? 
What are the success stories? What have other people tried out? What have they learned? How do we enable that cross fertilization of learning across a global tribe of change makers who are hardwired to make a difference? So we have those, that's those set of courses. And what we have also done is we've had to think about if somebody was really up for this, was really looking to, uh, to jump into their own development as a change maker, what would be the best combination of courses that might work in that way? And that's what has, has given us um, our certificates. So we're going to be starting with two certificates that are a combination of three courses. And they are a certificate in social innovation and entrepreneurship and a certificate in creative leadership for complex times will be coming in September. So the social innovation and entrepreneurship certificate combines three of the courses that I just mentioned, the transformational leadership course, the living universe course, <clears throat> and the fundamentals of trade and finance course. And when you buy the certificate, course, because you're buying things bundled up together per course, it ends up making it cheaper for you. And then the other one we have is creative leadership. I mean, we said enough about that on the call this time uh, already. The kind of leadership that's needed in these complex times. So we've included the critical thinking course there to enable us to really engage in trying to discern what is it that works in the world and what do we need to let go of? How do we deal with these complex issues? Dwayne's Living Universe course to root us really in the basic perspective that we need to hold as we're engaging in our leadership and then the transformational leadership course as well. And likewise, as we, um, uh, as we did with the other certificate, we're including uh, a number of self-mastery modules. And let me just spend a moment on the impact course because this impact program that we developed is really what fuels our, our commitment to the missions, to the hands-on change project. And this is a program that we developed together with a company called Socionext, who are of Dutch and South African, and piloted it a number of um, months with the University of Amsterdam, in fact, five trimesters, I think, and then a number of universities in South Africa. And what it is, is it's really a lean startup process. So for anybody who's seeing a problem in the world, and is thinking about possible solutions and getting ideas, it takes you through that whole idea generation process all the way through to taking your product to market, to getting your organization, your social enterprise into the world, right from ideation, vision, and mission, including how do you do some financial planning, how do you create a marketing plan, um, what does a basic business plan look like, how do we pitch to possible investors, until you're really ready at the end of this program to step into the world with your social enterprise. And it can be a social enterprise, but it could just as well be a change project that you're wanting to carry out in your community or you're wanting to carry out within your organization. The mindset, skill set, tool set that you get in this program really equips you to, be, to, to have an effective offering that you take into the world. We're very excited about that. So any of these courses and certificates, you can take just without being part of a, an academic program. We're a university, but we're also a lifelong learning platform. So you can just decide, I'm just going to take a course now and I've, maybe I'll take that certificate. And later on, if you feel like it, you can take the credits that you earn through those courses and certificates and you can take them into an academic program. You don't have to, but people can already in May start a bachelor's program with a specific focus on social innovation and entrepreneurship. In September, we'll be starting with an MBA, an executive MBA, and an MSc as well. So you may want to start already with courses or certificates, and then come September, take the credits that you've earned through those into one of those master's programs. So we're really designing it to be as modular and personalized as possible. So you kind of take this course here, this piece here, you bundle them together, and those get you an academic degree. Or you could just take the course or certificate on its own, and those will give you badges, which are certificates that you can also put on your LinkedIn profile, for example, to really 
demonstrate to the rest of the world that there are certain core competencies that you have now demonstrated. And these are the competencies that are needed to be able to engage and thrive in this hyper complex world. So after that, I just wanted to leave you with, with one more thing as we get to the top of the hour here. And it's a little rap poem that my brother actually uh, created. And I think it really summarizes uh, where we are now and what it is that we have to offer here, hopefully together with you as part of Ubiquity. <clears throat> it's called, Are You Ready? Are you ready to let go of this 20,000 year eddy, which we know is just an undertow? We be tuning into the real flow here now. You can't compute the impact of this ubiquity institute. It's like taking off the mute on the voice of life, stepping onto the edge of the knife, a slice of how humans might be. Can you see what we've done? Can you see what we have begun? This the form which holds the storm. We feel the creature of learning burning. Invite the world in. It ain't no sin. She's turning at 40,000 miles an hour. That's a fact. That's power. The big bang rang, sang, echoing onto the mount. Blast from the past at last. Too much to count. The years of evolution, the earth, the human suffering and compassion. We're booming. That's a fusion of chaos and confusion. Away from the illusion of wealth. Our revolution is coming with stealth. Can you see what we have done? Can you see what we have begun? Do we dare to share the future of how humans might be? Do we dare to be free? Do I dare to be me? To be fully human? To love confusion and drop the illusion? Now we're booming. Do we dare to step into the places we most fear? Become clear? To find a community? True to me? I'm not being cute. There's no parachute. We already jumped out the plane. Do we dare to become sane? Again, this ain't about brain. This about living the future now. Yes is the answer to how. We move in and we groove in. But stop. Listen to me. Can you see what we have done? Can you see what we have begun? My sisters and brothers from other mothers. We are the ones where the ocean meets the shore. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Thank you.